welcome to 3D Bar Plots Lecture. So here we have a very simple 2D bar plot consisting of various fruits from apples to mangoes. So let's say we would like to create a 3D version of this or something equivalent. What we need to do is import the matplotlib and numpy modules, but also we have to import from the MPL underscore toolkit module the axis 3D method. So you'll have the MPL underscore toolkit module packaged with the matplotlib module. So you should have this particular module here by default. Okay, so we run that, and then what I'm gonna do is have fig equal to plt.figure, and I'm just gonna leave that empty, but you can put in a fig size if you like. And then I'm going to have x1 equal to fig.add underscore subplot, and we'll put in just 111 for now, and then we'll have projection equal to 3D, and then I'm going to have here plt dot tight layouts because we're going to be having two subplots in a moment, then plt dot show. Okay, so you can see that we have an empty 3D plot here consisting of the X, Y, and Z axis. So let's say we want to fill this up. What we need to do is have a variable called colors, which is going to be a list consisting of six colors. So R for red, B for blue, G for green, M for magneta, C for scion and orange. And then we're going to have a for loop here. So for col1, col2, and z in a zip. And it's going to have colors. We're going to have a slice here of three. So it's going to be the first three colors, which are going to be red, blue, and green. And then we're going to have colors again. It's going to be instead three colons. It's going to be a slice of the last three colors, which are magneta, cyan, and orange. And then we're going to also have three, two, and one for the positions of our data that's going to be plotted. And I'm going to have our data that we're going to create. So x1 equals mp dots a range of 20. Then we'll have a semicolon to keep it on the same line. So y1 is going to be np dot random dot rands. It's going to be all positive float values here. So we'll have 20 as well. Make sure that you have 20 here and 20 here. They have to be the, both the same integer values inside the arrange and the rand methods. Okay, and I'm gonna have C1 equals in square brackets, col1 multiplied by len x1. Okay, and I'm going to have here x1 dot bar method with x1, y1, zs equals z, z dir. If I just hit the shift and tab, you can see the various parameters here. So left, height, zs, equals zero by default, z dir equals z by default, which is not really the best kind of orientation. Essentially, you can have x, y, or z, and if I put a y in here, it will have a particular orientation of the output of the 3D model. And then we'll have color equal to c1, and we'll put an alpha in if we like, so 0 0.8. Okay, so run this and see what we get. Okay, great, so we have our 3D plot here, which consists of these green, blue, and red bars. Let's say I want to have a subplot here. So instead of just one, I want to have two. What we can do is firstly modify the code here. So instead of being one, 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 we'll have one, two, one. And then we have x two equals fig, add underscore subplots, one, two, two, projection equals 3D. Okay, and then we're going to have here data for our x2 subplots it's going to be x2 equals mp dots a range let's say we have 50 and then we're going to have a semicolon y2 equals mp dots random dot rounds so have 50 then i'm going to have c2 equals col2 this time multiplied by len x2 and then i can have the ax2 dot bar method with x2 y2 so it's pretty standard process here zs equals z z dir we'll have this one as x this time color equals c2 and we'll leave out the alpha okay so i'm just going to scroll down so we can see the totality of the outputs run this and as you can see i have the original and the new subplot here as well so you can see it has the magneta cyan and orange colors with the orientations of y and x respectively 
So let's say I change this to Z, you'll see why I don't use this. As you can see, it doesn't really make sense. It's not really that appropriate, but you may want to use it. Okay, so put this back to Y and X. So that concludes my lecture on 3D bar plots. I hope it's been insightful and I hope you enjoyed making these 3D plots. Thanks.